Hey, I'm Heath. And I'm Janelle. And Sony just had a pre-TGS press conference, and we had a pre-TGS, let's sit down pre-TGS. So we're going to talk about, just real quick, uh, reactions, thoughts, analyses, folksy stories about the things that were announced moments ago, hours ago. I can't tell day from night anymore. Uh, when you're in Tokyo, it's all just Tokyo, I guess. So, anyway, right off the bat, Janelle, what jumped out at you? Um, Gravity Rush 2 jumped out at me. I really... I feel like we missed an opportunity for a great pun there. Like, I could have said, what's up? <laughs> and laughed at my own joke, but I missed the chance. Gotta take those chances. I love laughing at my own jokes. I'm the only one who does. So, Gravity Rush 2... I'm excited to hear that another one, <laughs> some guy all the way across the walkway just laughed at something <laughs> totally unrelated. But it fit, it fit in with what I was saying, so it now did. now I get to laugh We're at like irony. outside, by the way, doing something different today. Yeah, podcasting outside. Anyway. Uh, yeah, as I, as I was saying, I'm happy to hear that there's more Gravity Rush coming. Uh, it's a bit disappointing to hear that it's not coming to the Vita, especially since... That was one of the Vita's main selling points for a while. To me, it is the best original Vita game. Yeah, and so to hear that a sequel won't be coming, that's, that's bittersweet because you well, know that... Well, it'll be coming, but not to the... Yeah, sorry. won't be coming to the Vita mm. because... That's bittersweet because I like the idea of flying, falling around a huge detailed world with the additional processing power of the PS4. I really did like it in my hands, on my Vita, on my beautiful OLED screen. You know? Yeah, yeah but, it was a great gaming experience. Yeah, so that's, you know, good news, but disappointing. How about you? Well, there was that. I don't, I don't like Sony just treating the Vita like it's dead. Like, if there had been two new Gravity Rush games announced, one is PS4 and one is Vita, okay, at least I could see that, but it's like... It's like you got these Gravity Rush fans on the Vita and then just, well, guys, it's been cool. At, but, you know, Sony's fumblings and failings on the Vita end of things, on the handheld things in general, is a, a lengthy topic for another time. Ryu Gagotoku, also known as Yakuza, which I'm not going to say a whole lot because I'm outside in Tokyo. So we will call it by its Japanese title. Anyway, I'm I not... Was, yeah, go ahead. I mean... I expected there to be another game coming, because there is one every year here. It's been ten years and, what, eleven games? Something like that. Yes. So I was expecting some type of announcement, because we hadn't heard anything. And I was expecting another cross, cross-platform cross game, and, you know, game you true. and I were... Yeah, half right. There are yeah. two games coming, which I'm not exactly... I mean, that's cool, but I'm not super thrilled about it, because it feels like a real saturation point. Like, already the game is coming out. Yeah. This is a new one. January. Kiwami is coming out in January. And remember, Zero came out in March, so that's less than a year. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it came out in March of this year, so that's less than a year between releases. And that's it's not like this is an episodic two to five hour experience. These are like 40 plus hour slugfests. 40 hours is the short end of it. Yeah. If you really want to collect everything, you really want to do all the side quests, you want to see the whole story. Um, if you want to go everywhere that you can go, you could get you know, 60, 70 hours or more out of those. And a lot of fans do. But that, and, you know, I know from great. my experience with Disgaea, you get burned out. Yeah, I mean, it's great, but, I mean, the Ryugo Gagotoku games provide a, a great sort of experience, but it's a one-of-a-kind experience, and you don't really want to keep coming back to that too frequently. There is such thing as too much of a good thing. Yeah, and so the idea that there are going to be two games released this year, I could understand Kiwami, because it no, looks like... No, by this year you mean 2016. Yeah, sorry. In one year, yes. Mm -hmm. Within a year, within a year of within each a other. Year of each other. Yeah. Kiwami, I can understand it having a quick turnaround because it's cross-platform and it uses a lot of the Zero models. I mean, you know, they're going to change the clothing and the hair and the whatever and they're going to color in the tattoos. But it's, you know, we've talked about this before. Anything that makes it making a game easier, any way you can keep reusing assets, I'm okay with that. And yeah, so that's I can fine. understand quick turnaround on that. But in it, introducing another mainline game, we don't know anything about it, just that it's coming, and it's coming next fall. Uh, just something about that and just it, It'll seems... be, again, just a few months of a buffer. Yeah, it just, it just seems too quick. It seems like they're not being maybe as careful as they could be. It seems like 
you don't want to churn them out too quickly. You don't want to fatigue your audience. And well, I sales, already feel fatigued. Yeah, I thing. already feel fatigued, and I've only played like one and a half. <laughs> And I've played a lot more than that. <laughs> yeah. So, but um, but I, I will be skipping Kiwami probably. Um, I just I just don't need to play that again. You know, I I need a time out. I need to go a little longer. And I think a lot of people feel the same way because the sales for each successive entry recently have gone. They pretty much keep going down. down. I yeah. feel like there was a a small jump. I'll have to check the numbers. I'll, I'll check the numbers maybe before we post this. I feel like there was a small jump. Uh, between from Ishin to Zero, but Ishin is is a, is a samurai yeah. era spinoff, and it was a launch title in Japan. And so, you know, launch titles are always a little handicapped like that. And so, by the time Zero came around a year later, a year's worth of customers had PS4s, mm-hmm. and it was more appealing to kind of the mainstream because it was the characters in a more modern environment. Yeah. So it did a little better than Ishin. But it wasn't approaching five or four or three levels of tremendous sales. Yeah, so again, it's like bittersweet. Some good news about a franchise that I like, but at the same time, it's kind of not good news. I feel like, what I do like about it, I like that they're going PS4 exclusive on number yes, six. Yes, that's something you've been saying you've wanted more companies to do, and especially this particular development team probably should have done it. Well, I mean, it's hard to argue with the PS3 It's numbers, It's tough but... to say. That I'm, I'm okay with them going cross-generation for Zero. But, but after, that, after that, you know, now we're getting into... I don't want the games to be held back. I don't feel like Zero was super held back, given how quickly it came. It's like, with more power... Well, to take advantage of that power, you still need more time. Yes. So I don't know how much better of a game Zero would have been if it were PS4 exclusive. Yeah, yeah all that... Not... But now, with the sixth entry, okay, now you can make the cities bigger, uh, more sprawling. You could add more content to them, more voices. Because the games need more, more content. content. <laughs> yeah, I just I just spent some time griping about how long they are. Well, they are when you're playing them every eight months. <laughs> okay, so, but anyway, they could add uh, voices in more places. Because while Zero was technically very good to look at and ran super smoothly on PS4. There were a lot of weird sections where there was just a five or eight minute story sequence with just text, Mm -hmm. which I don't have a problem with. Hey man, I grew up with JRPGs, but it just, it does feel a little weird. It does feel a little out of place with a game that is otherwise technically very strong. So speaking of good news, not good news, oversaturated franchises, (laughs) we heard about Kingdom, oh, I think this is ridiculous. Kingdom Hearts 2.8? The fuck are they doing with these names? Because the names and the plot and the continuity wasn't confusing enough already. <laughs> now, is this Roman numeral 2.8? Like, 2.5? Uh, I, this... think I, I think that's what I saw in the logo, but of course my brain could just be conflating the logo of 2.5, which was Roman numeral 2 so... dot uh, Arabic style 5. Yeah. <laughs> So, my question is, where does the 8 come from? Is the 8 coming from, this is almost 3, but not quite? Or does the 8 have some inner is, meaning? Well, part or? of it is 0.2, isn't there? Isn't it? Like, zero, the 0. 0.2, like the Aqua, the, the Birth by Sleep edition, Fragment, is, is called, I what it's called. 0.2. So, are they taking 3 minus 0.2 and getting 2.8? I love how we're trying to math this out. I, I forget what makes... the justification... Do you remember 358 over two days on the DS? Yeah, it was I like, remember... well, it takes place over the days that Roxas was doing this and thinking about that. And there's 300... Uh, there was a reason for it. I forget the reason because it was so super contrived. And then later you hear the name Birth by Sleep on the PSP, and you're like, sadly, that's as much sense as the series has ever made at least since the first game, where, or, or first couple, where it was Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts 2, all right. And then you find out, was it in an inter- interview, like, Birth by Sleep got its title because Nomura wanted the word by in the title. Like, I wanted the word by in there. It's my favorite preposition. I feel like the title guy went to one of those, like, special schools where they emphasize, like, 
your feelings and interpretive drawings and dance and right, where Matt, right. like remember in Arrested Development, maybe comes home and her grades are like crocodiles and drugs <laughs> and stuff. So maybe the title guy went to one of those schools and learned math there, and that's why we've got Roman numeral two point Arabic eight and yeah. three fifty eight over two days. Anyways, you know, Dream Drop Distance was the only game in the series that wasn't represented in some form on a PlayStation platform, and in particular in these remaster collections that they've been doing. Yeah, they're not all playable on PlayStation systems. There's a couple that are still on DS that coded and uh, 358 over 2, but they are, you can watch them as super boring movies on the HD collection. Yeah. So, you know, I know that there were people saying, like, oh, but there's one on the 3DS, I don't want a 3DS or something, and I want to play the last one. Well, now you can. So yeah. that's good news. And, and, and it's good. That one leads into Part 3. It's pretty important to see. Yeah. And then uh, there's a new chapter, I guess, of Kingdom Hearts Key, which is a browser game. I believe it's Japan only. And I don't really know the story or what the deal is, but it deals with the Keyblade War that came before Birth by Sleep. So I guess it's cool to have that in some form that most people can play. And then another Birth by Sleep chapter I will not complain about because Birth by Sleep might be my favorite in the series. So Yeah, that'll be the one thing that uh, keeps me coming back. Like, I'll bite. I'm part of the problem, I guess. It's weird because Kingdom Hearts 3, and I'll, I'm going to... I'm in the middle of writing something about this. Just just a, a little thought piece. It's, I don't really have like a point or anything other than, hey, think about this and isn't it funny? Kingdom Hearts 2 came out for PlayStation 2, and imagine yourself playing it and imagine yourself watching the ending and thinking, wow, that was cool. And then you see like the secret thing and you think, well, there's got to be a third one, right? And there's all this internet talk about, oh, there's going to be a third one. Did you see that? There has to be. And now imagine someone from the future going, pa-pow, guess what? Kingdom Hearts 3 will come late generation for the PlayStation 4. <laughs> what would you have thought? And thats it's just funny how, like, if you would go back and tell your former self... That that's what would happen. That the PlayStation 3 would come and go without an original numbered Kingdom Hearts game, you wouldn't believe that person showing no, up. you'd be pretty surprised. And I think that anyone who heard that would be almost worried. Like, why wasn't there? Yeah. Is the company in trouble? You know, but... Yeah, and if you add in, oh, well, there'll be a PSP game and a game on the DS and then a cell phone game that's made into a DS game. Like, I just picture... I just picture my younger face, like, not even moving in reaction. Like, what am I supposed to... What... What does that mean? I don't care. <laughs> and I do care. I like I like Birth by Sleep. That's my, that's my favorite Kingdom Hearts game so far. Uh, I really like it a lot. However, there's just this itch. If you're told that something is coming and you expect it, the whole community expects it, the developers are like, oh, yeah, that thing is, uh, oh, yeah, we're going to do it. No official announcement, you guys, but we're going to. Even if you get other good things, you always wonder about the one that got away. In a fiery blaze, Saga exists. Wow, it exists. I like those saga games. Um, there's not much on it. There was just still shots of anime characters fading in and out. That could mean anything. Could mean anything, but it's just nice to know that it's not vaporware. Because a while ago, Square Enix announced Saga 2015 for Vita. And I'm like, hey, I like Vita. I, I like Saga. And so I very much wanted this to happen, but months and months of silence, you always get a little concerned. So it was nice to see Proof of Life. And that is all. Uh, there was also some news. Jack the Ripper is going to be in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care either. Uh, World of Final Fantasy got a new trailer. I'm, I'm, I'm lukewarm. I'm not, like, super on board, but I'm not, like, disgusted. I don't know. I, I've got enough of a, I've got a good, you know, Square Enix has a good, good enough track record with innovation and making little spin-offs, regardless of how, like, cutesy they look. Like, the other of them was great. So, I'll, I'm content to wait and see on... World yeah. Of Final Fantasy. Yeah. In in general, I mean, there's always there's always the member of a series that you just hate, and it's a popular series to bag on because with so many games, everybody's gonna have a couple that they just hate, and I'm no exception. But th they're always worth a try. The the Final Fantasy games are always worth a look to me, if nothing else to, to satisfy curiosity. So there's that. Um, 
I don't think the HD remaster of 12 is going to show up and surprise anybody because there's already like a lot of publicly known currently in production Final Fantasy games. There's 15, there's ongoing maintenance and updates to 14, there's the 7 remake, there's World of Final Fantasy. I think adding another one to that list is probably not in Square Enix's plans at all. No. Um, so. so maybe at Jump Fest it'll get something, but I doubt that even. I don't think we'll see it here. I don't think that'll be a surprise last minute no. show. Uh, Morpheus has been rebranded to PlayStation VR, which I don't. I don't really care what they call it. That impacts me in no way at all. I guess that that's more descriptive to the general consumer, though. I get, it probably makes it seem more appealing, mm-hmm. and maybe the guy from The Matrix called them and was like, you're taking my name. That happened to the ill-fated Nintendo Keanu Reeves, which uh, sold, sold poorly because they had to change its name to something else that, you know, wasn't as catchy. Sorry, I was listening to an ambulance wailing in the background. It's probably coming to resuscitate that joke, because... Ooh, I just got it. I, I don't know. I don't really super take anything away from that. All I wanted all I wanted to do in mentioning that is that I will be playing some Morpheus PlayStation VR games here, but I guess I don't get to pick. Like, I got an email from Sony saying, like, yeah, you, you get to come in and play some Morpheus games, because it was still called Morpheus at the time, but you don't get to pick. (laughs) Like, there's a bunch of them, you'll play some of them, you don't get to pick. I guess there's a Hatsune Miku game, I I hope I get to play that one, given my play history recently. VR is something I haven't gotten my hands on yet. Or no, wait, I tried a very early prototype of Project Morpheus a couple of years ago. Did you play the golf? Yeah, it was the Mina no Golf. Uh-huh. Which is uh, Hot Shots Golf. Yeah, demo. And it just, it was heavy, it hurt my head. It's, I know that there are a lot of cool things being done with VR, but I get really dizzy, motion sick very easily, and, um... Did you get motion sick when you played it? Um, it was hurting my eyes. Was this two years ago? This was a, two or three years ago, yeah, and I, I don't yeah. remember exactly, but I... So, like, if I try a newer version, like, I'm excited to see what people are doing, but at the same time, I'm not excited for my eyes. There's, like, that anxiety? A little yeah. bit, just... I wonder if my eyes will be okay, because I've had eye surgery, and ever since then, 3D things almost always give me a headache. And I, I had a 3D headset experience myself a couple years ago. Uh, it was at the TGS. Sony did the it was prototype, uh, some kind of prototype thing. Where I didn't play a game, but I was given a presentation where a, a lady played a violin and then turned into a monster, and then I was shown a Resident Evil movie trailer in 3D on my headset. But I had to keep closing my eyes to prevent a headache. Um, and now this does not apply to 99.99 something percent of the listening audience. You say that, but, like... Probably. The but, amount um, of people who get affected by this is not a small number. Like, it's larger than 10%, I think. Well, really? Because I never hear the discussion brought up. I hear it discussed sometimes with the Nintendo 3DS, which, yes, of course, does give me a headache very quickly. If I switch that thing to 3D, I'm done. Maybe it's just because I run around with a lot of, like, indie circles and I'm up on that, but developers are really struggling with, like, wow, I made a an Oculus Rift demo and it made a bunch of people motion sick or uh. hey guys I just found this study that if you add a virtual nose to your image then it increases the amount of time people can play by 14 seconds before they get sick and stuff <laughs> holy like <that>. shit <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that so um, wow <laughs> so so I wonder I hadn't seen any of that come up with Morpheus uh, so I don't know if that will or not I'm not it super excited hasn't. about it come but, up because there aren't a lot of yeah of experience like but, people haven't experienced it in the wild very much yet. you know i'll just i'll just be honest with the booth people um if it starts to give me a headache i just i i don't really have a choice but i'm gonna have to take it off and and say i, I can't do it yeah. because i remember the first time i had a 3ds was at a tokyo game show it hadn't was, hadn't been released yet you're playing dream drop distance i was i was actually playing kingdom hearts dream drop distance that's right and i just got curious i slid that thing up to 3d and it was seconds before i just i felt this crippling uh, uh, i was just had to squeeze and stop and, and slide that thing down and it was hours like it lasted a while 
So, you know, I, I love giving my thoughts on games and stuff for people, but I'm not going to be, like, physically tortured for it, so... But didn't you play Rhapsody? That's true. I did. That that that, that game is torture. So I've done it. Well, let's, let's rephrase that. I've done it. I'm not super in a hurry to do it again. Do you think a phantom runs out on the Sega stage and announces a Persona 5 release date? I would not be shocked if that happened. Mm-hmm. Or, it, like, it could happen during the business days like that, or maybe during the, the fan fest and music, what was it, Persona Stalkers? Or yeah, they're doing a thing on Saturday. It could be then. Could be. I, w- I would be surprised if TGS ends without something more concrete on uh, yeah. Persona 5's release date. Yeah, they I'll, keep insisting 2015, and there isn't much of that left. So I wonder if they'll announce it for like next week, out of nowhere, and then we'll be like, Atlas just shot themselves in the foot. <laughs> I know. I would say Atlas just made themselves the greatest company ever because that is awesome. That that'd be fantastic. Anyway, that'd well, be, that would be ballsy. If, if it shows up, that's cool. If it shows up playable, that's super cool. L- listen to me. I'm a professional at this, and I'm using phrases like super cool. Super cool. Okay. So, we're kind of recording this. It's the day before mm-hmm. TGS. We're outside the Messe right now. This is the first year that they're going to be using all of the space. And, you know, you might think, well, weren't they using the space before? Yeah, but they weren't using all of it. They weren't using every hall. There there were always some halls, and then one hall was always, like, a throwaway, like, a food court or something. And yeah, so, and, and there was, like, a family game center with little basketball games and carousels and things for your kids, you know. Yeah. They m- merchandise area. Merchandise was always a hall on yeah. its own. And it might still be, but it's further away. Just like the main meat of like the company booths are in this main building now, and they're taking up all of the halls. So I don't know. That'll at least make it harder for people to run around and take pictures of empty-looking corners and be like, see, TGS is dying. Yeah, see, and people do that, and it drives me nuts. They're like, is Tokyo Game Show dying? And they'll take a picture of the empty food court where there is no, like, there's nothing over there. And then you get the attendance numbers, and it's the highest attended of all time. It's like, more people come to this than E3. Yeah. Well, I think we're talking about attendance and stuff, and... I think part of what spurs that is that there's kind of a misunderstanding about what TGS is, in that it's not like a huge press hype fest like E3 is or was. There is it's, that. That's an I mean, ingredient. There, that's an ingredient, for sure. But it's as much of a like conference for business people to sit down and talk business, and for the public to just show up and play some games and sell some merchandise, than it yeah. is for... Like, the press to come and be like, how awesome is this game? It's yeah. so awesome. This is this, where, yeah. That's why there aren't, I mean, there haven't been lots of huge announcements coming out of TGS, sure. And you can make the argument that it's butting up too close to Gamescom, and it's difficult and PAX. for... And PAX. And PAX now. PAX is a thing. And it's difficult for companies to get, say, new demos or much new content out onto the show floor. But... I'm interested to see how it goes over the next few years. And people have been arguing, too, like, oh, such and such large company is skipping TGS. Does this mean it's not relevant anymore? And it's like, well, just because the big companies that you, foreign journalist, like, aren't coming doesn't mean that there's nothing here in that pl- in their place. Yeah. Like, Gree has had a huge booth for the last three or four years now. And, mm-hmm. every, you know, most people are probably going, well, what's Gree? It's like, and, and mobile, and they'll, they'll roll their eyes like, oh, mobile games, but those are huge business. And just that goes in what really, you were saying. You were saying it's a business conference. Yeah, and also just the Japanese, the average public consumer here is more into the mobile scene than yeah. console wars or handhelds or anything and like that. And portables the, are beating TV consoles anyway because yeah. people are out of their houses a lot. Riding the train. There, there's a lifestyle can't take thing. Your, yeah. PS4 on the train. Yet. Yet. <laughs> but what about remote play? <laughs> <laughs> remote play is my joke. Which I guess Sony got sued over. I saw that remote play trailer and I'm like, there's no fucking way that's gonna do that. And people were like, you're just a hater. And now, like, people are getting checks in the mail. Sorry that it didn't work the way we said it would, and kind of showed in that video. Years later. Ever win an argument years later? Okay. Well, that's about all I've got as far as pre-show 
yeah. chit chat because you know tomorrow it'll actually be happening and we'll have actual things to actually yeah. talk about. And maybe we'll do another one of these after the first day or after the second or third. Yeah, we'll, de- we'll definitely be doing our post some amount of show thoughts and we'll be of course writing up impressions and all kinds of yeah stuff. So you know, keep an eye on that. Thanks for listening. I'll be doing uh, Twitter stuff if people care about that. I'm at the Heath Heinemann with the, the name thing. It'll be in the thing. Thanks again.